towards CLAT 2020. Today in one such session with us, we have Ms. Dhwani Gupta, who's an English grammar specialist. And, the today's, and today's session is on topic of reading comprehension and tenses. Over to you, Dhwani. Thank you, Harsh. Hello, everybody. My name is Pani Gupta. In today's session, we are going to discuss uh, reading comprehension and tenses. So like every session, let's start with the reading comprehension passage. So first, I'm going to read out the passage, explain it to you, and then together we can solve the questions. So let's get started. It is an old saying that knowledge is power. Education is an instrument which imparted knowledge and therefore indirectly controls power. Therefore, ever since the dawn of civilization, persons in power have always tried to supervise or control education. It has been the handmaid of the ruling class. During the Christian era, the ecclesiastics controlled the institution of education and diffused among the people the gospel of the Bible and religious teachings. So the writer is saying in the passage that uh, education is the only instrument which gives us knowledge and therefore it controls power. So uh, ever since when the civilization started, so people who were powerful always used to control education. So it has all education has always been in the hands of the rich in the ruling class. So during the Christian era, people uh, which are associated to the church or clergymen, they used to control uh, education and uh, they used to spread the teachings of Bible uh, among the people. Okay. These gospels and teachings were no other than a philosophy for the maintenance of the existing society. It taught the poor man to be meek and to earn his bread with the, with the sweat of his bro, while the priest and the landlords lived in luxury and fought duels for the slightest offense. During the Renaissance, Education passed more from the clutches of the priest into the hand of the prince. In other words, it became more secular. It was also due to the growth of the nation state and powerful monarchs who united the country under their rule. Thus, under the control of the monarch, education began to devise and preach the infallibility of its masters, the monarch or king. So the writer is saying that uh, the teachings and uh, the, the gospels which were spread by the Christian people were basically a philosophy for the maintenance of the society. It basically uh, taught people that the poor man should work very hard to earn his livelihood while the priest and the landlords always used to have a very luxurious life and even they fought for slight crimes also. So during the Renaissance, there was a complete change. There was a lot of change. The education passed from the priest to the kings. So it was basically, uh, there was a reason behind this because the powerful monarchs united their country under the rule. So uh, at that time, at that era, when the education was uh, shifted to the kings, the theory which was spread, which was very uh, uh, which was which spread there then was that the kings can never go wrong. So basically, infability का मतलब होता है कि राज को मतलब कभी भी कोई गलती नहीं करना कि कभी कोई गलती कर ही नहीं सकता. So basically, उस era पे ये teachings ये uh, theory spread हो गई थी कि जो आपका king करता है that is correct. वो कभी कुछ गलत कर ही नहीं सकता है. It also invented and supported fantastic theories like the divine right theory and the king can do no wrong, etc. With the advent of the Industrial Revolution, education took a different turn and had to please the new masters. It now no longer remained the privilege of the barren class, but was thrown open to the new merchant class of society. Yet education was still confined to the few elite. The philosophy which was in vogue during this period was that of laissez-faire restricting the function of the state to a mere keeping of law and order while, on the other hand, in practice, the law of the jungle prevailed in the form of free competition and the survival of the fittest. So basically, uh, the writer is saying that 
during that era there was a theory which was named divine right theory which meant that ki raja kabhi galat ho hi nahi sakte it is because it is god themselves who had bestowed uh, them with this duty of uh, ruling the country to wo log kabhi galat ho hi nahi sakte but as industrial revolution took place there was a drastic change now the education shifted from the hands of the kings to the uh, basically the to the people who controlled industries but at that time also education was confined to the rich people to uh, to elite people so the the philosophy which was which spread during that period was that the state had to follow a policy of uh, uh, of minimum interference which means that their only function is to maintain law and order but in reality this is all baseless in reality there is jungle law prevailed everywhere which means that uh, the person who is strong who is powerful can survive otherwise the weak jo log weak hain ya jo log itne powerful nahi hain they they have they, it is very difficult for them to survive in such a society so this is the passage uh now it's time for the questions let's discuss the questions what does the theory of divine right of king stipulate so divine right of theory kya kehti hai kya kehlati hai what does it mean so the first option is that kings are gods b they have the right to be worshiped like gods by their subjects c that the right of governing is conferred upon kings by god d that the right of kings are divine and therefore sacred so the first option is the king are gods to passage mein bilkul bhi ye nahi likha hai ki jo kings hain wahi bhagwan hai so this is completely wrong this is irrelevant now let's move to the next option which is they have the right to be worshiped like gods by their subjects no it is this is also not written in the passage ki wo log uh, ki they they should be regarded gods and they should be worshiped by their subjects no it is not written there in the passage so even b is also wrong c that the right of governing is conferred upon kings by god yes divine right theory ka matlab yahi hota hai ki jo वो लोग गवर्न करते हैं जो वो रूल करते हैं पूरी कंट्री को ये ड्यूटी भगवान ने खुद उनको दी है तो दिस इज बेसिकली द डिवाइन राइट ऑफ किंग डी दैदर सो ऑप्शन सी इज द करेक्ट आंसर डी दैट द राइट ऑफ किंग्स आर डिवाइन एंड देयर फॉर सेक्रेड नो दिस इज आल्सो रॉन्ग सो ऑप्शन सी इज द करेक्ट आंसर हमें वर्ड से ही पता चल रहा है डिवाइन राइट ऑफ किंग डिवाइन राइट मींस अ राइट व्हिच इज गिवन बाय गॉड व्हिच इज बेस्टोड बाय गॉड so that is uh, option c is the correct answer now the next question is what does the expression handmade of the ruling class mean kya matlab hota hai handmade of the ruling class there was written that uh, there was written in the passage education was the handmade of the ruling class why what does it mean private mistress of the prince no b something fully under the control of the ruling class Yes, this is correct. Handmade of the ruling class मतलब कोई चीज जो कि ruling class के पास ही है उन्हीं के control में है So that is called handmade of the ruling class. So option B is the correct answer. C. Private maid servants of the prince. No, this is wrong. Nothing as such is mentioned in the passage. It is irrelevant. The symbol of authority of the prince. No. Option B is the correct answer. Handmade of the ruling class की कोई उनके पूरे उनके control में थी पूरी education system at that time. All right. The question, question number three is, what does the word infallibility mean? So uh, when I when I was reading the passage, I told its meaning. So let's see, uh, what are the options? First, that every man is open to error. B, that some divine power is responsible for determining the fate of men. C, the virtue of not making any mistake. D, sensitivity. So. The first option is that every man is open to error. हर इंसान गलती कर सकता है बिल्कुल कर सकता है but this is not the meaning of infallibility. Next option is that some divine power is responsible for determining the fate of men. Uh, this also doesn't mean infallibility. the virtue of not making any mistake yes this is the correct answer because as when i was explaining the passage i told that ki infallibility ka matlab hota hai jab koi insaan galti kar hi nahi sakta infallibility word is been used for the kings 
क्योंकि उस टाइम पे जो थ्योरी स्प्रेड हुई थी कि किंग्स कभी गलती कर ही नहीं सकते हैं सो द वर्च्यू ऑफ नॉट मेकिंग एनी मिस्टेक ऑप्शन सी इज द करेक्ट आंसर डी सेंसिटिविटी डी इज आल्सो रॉन्ग इट इज इरेलेवेंट सो ऑप्शन सी इज द करेक्ट आंसर नाउ द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज वॉट डिड द रूलिंग क्लास इन द क्रिश्चियन एरा थिंक ऑफ द पुअर मैन so what is being said for the poor man in the passage uh, in the second uh, slide we can we have seen ki poor man ke bare mein kuch likha tha so let's see what it is written what does christian people uh, ruling class uh, in the christian era think of, of poor man first that he is the beloved of god no certainly not nothing as such is written in the passage this is this was not the teaching of that time b that he deserves all sympathy of the rich no even this is not written in the passage that he should be strong obviously he should be strong but this is also not written in the passage d that he is meant for serving the rich yes this is mentioned ki jo jo poor log hote hain unko ye unko ye uh, Uh, it is believed that they should work very hard to earn their livelihood they should always uh, spend their life uh, serving the rich so yes option d that he is meant for serving the rich is the correct answer okay the next question is what do you mean by the sweat of his brow what does it mean sweat of his brow is basically uh, a phrase which means a very hard work b the tiny droplets of sweat on the forehead C the wrinkles visible on the face D the sign of innocence so let's see option first is very hard work yes this is the correct answer it means sweat of his brow means very hard work bahut mehnat se they were always expected during the christian era that the poor people should work very hard to earn their livelihood and they should always serve the rich so option A is the correct answer but we will read the other options also b the tiny droplets of sweat on his forehead uh, no this is wrong the wrinkles visible on the face this is this option is also wrong d the sign of innocence no even this is wrong so the correct answer is a very hard work all right now let's move to the next question why have persons in power always tried to supervise or control education तो जो लोग भी हमेशा पार में रहते जो पार्ट में थे जो पावरफुल होते हैं वाई डू दे ऑलवेज वॉन्ट टू कंट्रोल एजुकेशन क्या रीजन हो सकता है कि उन्हें हमेशा एजुकेशन uh, को कंट्रोल करना होता है ए बिकॉज दे वॉन्टेड टू एजुकेट द होल पब्लिक बी बिकॉज दे वॉन्टेड टू डिप्राइव द कॉमन मैन ऑफ द बेनिफिट ऑफ एजुकेशन सी बिकॉज इट इज एन इंस्ट्रूमेंट ऑफ नॉलेज इन दे फोर पार डी नन ऑफ दीज so let's see what is the first option because they wanted to educate the whole public yeah, uh, nothing as such is written in the passage ki is this is the reason kyunki unhe sab puri public ko educate karna hai sabko padhana hai sabko education deni hai that is why they want to have control no this is wrong this is not written in the passage unka certainly ye motto to nahi tha b because they wanted to deprive the common man of the benefits of education nay even this is also wrong it uh, it doesn't mean ki agar unhe chahiye to wo logo ko common man ko education hi provide karna chahte hain even this is wrong c because it is an instrument of knowledge and therefore power so as written in the first uh, first line of the sentence that knowledge is power to बिकॉज एजुकेशन से ही नॉलेज मिलती है नॉलेज जब मिलती है देन यू आर पावरफुल सो बिकॉज दे वॉन्ट टू दे वॉन्ट पार इन देर हैंड्स दे डो नॉट वॉन्ट टू लीव पार एनी हाउ दैट इज द मेन रीजन दे ऑलवेज वॉन्टेड टू हैव सुपरवाइज और कंट्रोल ऑफ एजुकेशन सो ऑप्शन सी इज द करेक्ट आंसर डी नन ऑफ दीज दिस इज रॉन्ग ऑप्शन सी इज द करेक्ट आंसर द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज वॉट डज द फिलोसफी ऑफ less fair stand for option a is joint control of the means of production by the state and private enterprise b individual freedom in the economic field c full development of the individual's personality d none of these 
So option A is joint control of the means of production by state and private enterprise. This is uh, wrong because when I was explaining the passage, I told the meaning of this word. So this is certainly not what it means that the state or private enterprise uh, joint control. Ho. That is wrong. B, individual freedom in economic field. Economic field may freedom. Even this is wrong. It is irrelevant. Hai. Full development of the individual's personality. No, it doesn't mean uh, 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 option C is also wrong. D, none of these. Yes, D is the answer, none of these. Actually, the real meaning of lace fair is the policy of leaving things to their own course without interfering. Basically, minimum interference, Rakna, that is called lace fair. All right, so option D, none of these is the correct answer. Okay, the next question is a grammar based question. The sentence enclosed within cross has one word that appears in a form that is grammatically incorrect in the context of that sentence. What is the word that appears in an incorrect form and what would be its appropriate form in the context of the sentence? So we are going to read out the options. Ki answer say it, then I'm going to switch back to the passage and we can read the sentence once again. Option A is imparted, imparts. B, controls, controlled. Supervise, supervising. D, have always, has always. So let's go back to the passage. Yes, so we are reading from here. I, I hope everybody can see the cross. Education is an instrument which imparted knowledge. Imparted. This is wrong. This is grammatically incorrect. Basically, education is an instrument which imparts knowledge. Because this is the truth. This is a fact. Matlab, ye imparted uh, past tense form may use why. This is something which will never change. Education uh, gave knowledge pehle bhi. Past may be, present may be, in future may future may be. So, galat hai, imparted nahi, imparts aega. This is because this is something which is true. It is based on facts. Ki ye hamesha hi aise raega. Jose kuch universal truth hote hai, to ye bhi universal truth hai, ki jo education hai, wo instrument hai, jo ki hamesha knowledge dega. So, which imparts? Imparts is the correct answer. Which imparts knowledge and therefore indirectly controls power. Even this is correct. There are no changes here. Therefore, ever since the dawn of civilization, persons in power have always tried to supervise or control education. Education. So, rest everything is correct, only this imparted is wrong, it should be imparts. It should be simple tense, simple present tense. Okay, so now let's move to simple tenses. Tense is a very important topic hai, and uh, this is one such topic which we are doing since our childhood days. 5th, 6th, 7th, we tenses ke mein padte hai, but this is one topic which uh, at times become very confusing also. So basically, our CLAT ka 2020 pattern, hai, usse se you can uh, just say, uh, you, we just solved one question, they can pick one line and they can say this is grammatically incorrect and it could be incorrect in any ways, maybe the tense is wrong. So in the last sentence, the last question which, which we did uh, abhi, to usme kya tha? Usme tense ka lata. So for that, we should have a very proper knowledge of tenses, ki konsa tense kab aata hai. So in this slide, we are not going to discuss about all the tenses but in particular in this session i'm going to discuss about simple tenses just simple tenses and in the upcoming sessions we'll discuss more about tenses so in this particular session i'm going to tell you uh, what are the various uses konsa tense cup kaise kyuana chahiye so basically we are going to do that so let's proceed simple tenses simple verb tenses the simple tense in English is the most basic way to express at what time an action is taking place. The three types of tenses are present tense, past tense, future tense. Simple tense is the basic way to express action ko express karne ka ke when an action is going on, when an action is taking place. So three types of tenses are this is very easy, present tense, past tense, future tense. Okay. Just like an example, hai. the simple tense is outlined in an example using a regular verb. So we are just using a regular verb, jump. So her tense may form of verb aega. We'll do that. Simple present, I jump. 
मतलब मैं अभी जंप कर रही हूँ सिंपल पास्ट आई जम्प्ड कि आई हैव ऑलरेडी जम्प्ड मैं जंप कर चुकी हूँ सिंपल फ्यूचर आई विल जम्प मीन्स मैं अभी जम्प करने वाली हूँ सो दिस इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन द थ्री ऑफ देम ऑल राइट now there are some examples of simple present tense some examples of actions that present tense expresses are habits to so, sabse pehle example he drinks tea every morning he get up every day at 5 o'clock to so, basically when we are talking about a habit jo hamari habit hai which we do daily and uh, wo kabhi change nahi hoti to uske liye hum kabhi bhi past tense ya future tense nahi use karte so for habits uh, we always use we always use present tense he drinks tea every morning because ye drank nahi hoga he will drink nahi hoga because this is something he is doing daily this is something which is part of his routine so he drinks tea every morning i get up every day at 5 o'clock so waking up at 5 o'clock is in my everyday routine this is something which i am doing daily so uh, in these types of sentences in all those sentences which is uh, in which the thing is uh, done out of habit and which is a part of routine so in all that sentences we never use past tense or future tense we always use present tense next is the next is to express general truths to so, jab hum kisi ek ट्रुथ के बारे में बात कर रहे हैं जो विच इज अ रियालिटी विच कैन नॉट बी चेंज वी ऑलवेज यूज प्रेजेंट टेंस हनी इज स्वीट सो हनी विल ऑलवेज बी स्वीट कभी हनी वॉज स्वीट हनी विल बी स्वीट ऑल दिस इज रॉन्ग बिकॉज दिस इज अ फैक्ट हनी इज समथिंग विच हैज टू बी स्वीट सो फॉर्च्यून फेवर्स द ब्रेव सो इन such sentences the sun rises in the east so in such in all these sentences we are talking about truth knowledge uh, knowledge imparts uh, education imparts knowledge in the last passage the passage which we done uh, which we have done now usme bhi ye ek cheez ye hai jo ki fact hai jo ki change nahi hoti wo ek general truth ke bare mein baat kar rahe hain to in these type of sentences we will never use past tense or future tense we always use present tense next is in exclamatory sentences starting with here and there to express what is going to take place in present basically jab koi exclamatory sentence hota hai or and when it is starting with here and there uh, ki abhi kuch hone wala hai to in that type of sentences also we always use simple present tense here comes the bus abhi bus aane wali hai there she goes so in these type of sentences also we always use simple present tense next is in vivid narrative so basically when somebody is narrating a story is is narrating something jab koi aap narration ka part hota hai aapke kisi story ka part hota hai to we always use present tense immediately the sun hurries to the sultan hurries to the capital shorin now rushes forward and deals a heavy blow to roza so in all these sentences we have used simple present tense because they, these are all part of the narration part of storytelling okay the next uses to express a future event that is a part of a fixed program to jab hum kisi future event ke bare mein baat kar rahe hain but wo future event is a part of a fixed program jo ki fixed rehta hai theek hai wo aisa nahi hai ki wo ek hi baar ho raha hai but that is in routine that it goes on in routine it is a fixed program so in that case is also we always use simple present tense example the match the match starts at 9 o'clock in the morning to so match har roz hi 9 o'clock subah shuru hota hai to so this is something which is a part of a fixed program i uh, it could be a future event it is a future event but it is a part of a fixed program second is the train leaves at 5:35 pm so the train will always leave every day leave at the at the same time so uh, as a future events mein jo ki part hai fixed program ke we always use simple present tense okay next is to introduce quotations so some in quotations also uh, we always use present tense kabhi bhi wo change nahi hum unme kar sakte tagore says beauty is the ultimate reality osho says self knowledge is ultimate knowledge so whenever we are uh, doing a sentence the beauty was the ultimate reality or beauty will be uh, the ultimate reality all this is wrong this is completely wrong quotations cannot be changed it will remain as they are 
वो जैसी हैं वैसे ही रहने वाली हैं तो इसीलिए टू वेन वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट अ कोटेशन और वेन वी आर यूजिंग अ कोटेशन वी विल नेवर चेंज देर टेंसेज नेक्स्ट इज वर्ब कॉन्जुगेशन फॉर सिंपल प्रेजेंट टेंस सो दिस इज समथिंग विच इज वेरी बेसिक बट अ लॉट ऑफ टाइम्स लॉट ऑफ पीपल आर easily mistaken in this part so i'll just explain regular verb jump hum use kar rahe hain to whenever we are using this pronoun i we always use jump i you we they you jai singular ho plural ho they ho we ho i ho we always use jump but if the pronoun is he she it we use jumps he jumps in into the swimming pool ठीक है तो इन सब इन सब चीजों में आई यू वी दे हम जंप यूज करते हैं और ही शी इट में हम जंप्स यूज जंप्स यूज करते हैं इट इज ऑलवेज द वर्ब इज ऑलवेज यूज विद द एस नाउ देर आर सम सेंटेंस एग्जांपल्स शी बाइट्स हर नेल्स सो अभी शी है शी है तो वी आर यूजिंग वर्ब विद एन एस शी बाइट्स हर नेल्स सो दिस इज अ हैबिट somebody is doing this thing out of habit to hamesha isme aayega simple present tense do not bite your nails so this is an instruction sun rises in the east so this is the fact jo ki kabhi change nahi hoga to sun sun rose sun will rise all this is wrong because this is a fact this will remain unchanged so this will always come in present tense i live in paris so this is an unchanging situation you cannot do about it because you are you are living there we love belgium chocolate ice cream so even this is also an unchanging situation if you love belgium chocolate ice cream this is a fact to ye bhi change nahi hoga so we will always use a uh, simple present tense now the next part is simple past tense now let's see what are the uses of simple past tense the simple past tense also called past tense is used to express actions that are completed at any time in recent or distant past और फॉर एनी ड्यूरेशन ऑफ टाइम तो सिंपल पास टेंस वो एक्शन को एक्सप्रेस करने के लिए यूज किया जाता है जो कि अभी पास्ट में बीच में कितने भी टाइम के लिए खत्म हो चुके हों पास्ट इज समथिंग विच हैव ऑलरेडी बीन डन जो कि हो चुकी है वी एड ई डी टू दी एंड ऑफ द रेगुलर वर्क टू क्रिएट सिंपल पास टेंस तो बेसिकली पास टेंस क्रिएट करने के लिए वी एड ई डी टू द रेगुलर वर्क and let's see the verb conjugation for the simple past tense verb forms for simple past tense now we are using the same regular verb jump so it is very simple as said earlier also we just add ed to the verb i jumped you jumped he she it jumped we jumped you plural jumped they jumped now let's see the sentences the streamer sailed yesterday kal Steamer sail hua tha. So this is uh, we are talking about an action which had already happened in the past. So we are using ed. I received his letter a week ago. एक हफ्ते पहले ही मुझे उसका letter मिला था. So this is something which has been done with the action हो चुका है. She left school last year. Last year ही उसने school छोड़ दिया था. So this is something which had already been done. He studied many hours every day. I learned Hindi in Nagpur. So, in all these sentences, we are talking about an action which had already been done in the past, which had been all, which already had been completed. So, that was simple past tense. Now, uh, we are going to discuss our last topic, which is simple future tense. The simple future tense, also called future tense, is used to express actions. That will certainly occur at any time later than now. Basically, future से हमें समझ में आता है कि कोई action जो कि होने वाला है future में आगे हो सकता है Add will or shall before the verb to create the simple future tense. So basically, simple future tense को create करने के लिए we simply add will or shall. Will jump, will go, will cook, will dance, shall shall uh, write all these types of sentences. now verb conjugation for simple future tense we just add will or shall ek i jo hota hai usme hum shall bhi use kar sakte hain will bhi use kar sakte hain it's very versatile you can use anything you want but with other pronouns like you he she it we you they we always use will 
तो हम बस शैल आई के लिए यूज कर सकते हैं रेस्ट बाकी सब में वी ऑलवेज यू यूज विल तो आई शैल और विल जम यू सिंगुलर विल जम ही शी इट विल जम वी विल जम यू प्रूरल विल जम दे विल जम सो नाउ लेट सी दी सेंटेंसेस आई शैल बी ट्वेंटी नेक्स्ट सैटरडे मैं अगले सैटरडे को ट्वेंटी ईयर्स की होंगी सो दिस इज समथिंग विच इज गोइंग टू हैपन जो अभी हुई नहीं है जो ना अभी हो रही है बट दिस इज समथिंग दिस इज सम एक्शन विच विल हैपन इन द फ्यूचर इट विल बी दिवाली नेक्स्ट वीक अगले हफ्ते दिवाली आने वाली है दिस इज समथिंग विच इज नॉट हैपन लेकिन वो अभी फ्यूचर में होने वाला है वी विल नो आर एग्जाम रिजल्ट इन मे हमें हमारे एग्जाम रिजल्ट्स मे में पता चलेंगे दिस इज समथिंग विच वी आर गोइंग टू नो इन मे विच विल हैपन इन मे फ्यूचर में ये चीज अभी होने वाली है आई थिंक इंडिया विल विन द मैच मुझे ऐसा लगता है कि इंडिया मैच जीत जाएगी तो दिस इज समथिंग कि ये वो सेंटेंस नहीं है जिसमें कि अभी इंडिया जीत चुकी है या अभी जीत रही है बट दिस इज समथिंग कि वो जीत सकती है This is my opinion कि I think India will win the match. हो सकता है कि India जीत जाए आई एम श्योर हेलन विल गेट अ फर्स्ट क्लास मैं श्योर हूँ कि हेलन को फर्स्ट क्लास मिलेगी तो दिस इज नॉट समथिंग कि उसे ये चीज मिल चुकी है बट आई थिंक आई होप आई विश कि ऐसा हो सकता है फ्यूचर में दैट शी विल गेट अ फर्स्ट क्लास so that's all for today in the next class we are going to discuss about uh, reading comprehension and uh, continuous tenses so thank you very much thank you so much ma'am for taking out time and joining us kids uh, let's meet tomorrow again for a session on current affairs and we will be discussing migrant crisis thank you thank you ma'am